<laughs> all right, so Cube. Yeah, no, all right, all right. <laughs> We're back. Yeah, I know. I, well, you always know there's going to be some catch-up time. I don't think what's know. going on. Right. Um, but yeah, we're back. Good, bad, and the garbage. Talking Cube. The low-budget masterpiece, as some would say. Um, some? some? I've seen some people say that. Uh, but yeah, perfect. Kate came out in 1997 it was it's a canadian film for whatever you know whatever that means to you oh, oh, uh, so many good things come from canada canada's just doing it right yeah but universal health care <laughs> careful i mean we just went pre-episode we just went on some yeah. political tangents let's let's not start <laughs> again um so yeah obviously rated r uh directed by uh vincenzo natili if I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, it stars literally six people. The premise is uh, it actually says six people in the synopsis, but I think there's seven people in this movie. Wake up. Well, the it... seventh is the opening character. Yes, you're correct. So barely in it, but you know, yeah. six, seven people wake up in a mysterious cube and they have to find their way out of it. The, literally the entire movie takes place in the cube or cubes the smaller ones within the the larger one uh so yeah it came out in 97 like i said very very low budget let me i have it here the budget on the movie was three hundred fifty thousand dollars. so spenders. not quite what was velocipaster I, I can it was like 50 oh, wasn't it 35 was like 35 that was the lowest budget so yeah, like thirty, so ten times the budget of Velocipaster, whatever you want to read into that. Well, they actually, well, they didn't, they didn't have a sweet Velociraptor Raptor suit, but they did actually have some like mechanical engineering. I feel like they had to do. For no, this. yeah, I think Velocipaster was Someone's more like how can pretty, pretty good for ninety seven. I well, that's all. I was like Velocipaster is like how can we use this money in somewhat joking ways? I would say, whereas uh, Cube was more so. Let's put this money to good use. Uh, very practical. So, really good practical. The, the movie, this, I have trivia for later, but I can at least talk about this now. So they only had one cube. Like, I don't know if you guys looked into that. Like, yeah, I'm not sure about that. They just had the one cube. They would, they would change the coloring, right? They didn't shoot the movie in sequence. They shot like, they started with the red color first. red. Yeah, they shot, they started with the color red. Let's do all the red scenes first. Boom. Then they change the coloring to orange or whatever. Let's do all the orange scenes. So they did it by color. So they had the one cube, and that's how they got away with it. Uh, so you know, pretty kind of really makes you appreciate acting. I mean, I know like a lot of movies do that, but this is obviously low budget and not like Hollywood studs. But to like go through an entire movie and but like in one minute yeah. snippets, so you at, have to like, like get half an hour between, or, no, like something yeah, yeah. during the movie, but you can't acting... build up to that. Acting right. in general to be on for like 30 seconds and then break and then you got to get back in the mode. No, I totally get it. I, I think this is more movie inside movie for me. I, it makes me appreciate editing and directing to like keep the story in like you're shooting it out of sequence. So to like keep the story in your head and like to know that you have all your shots for the color red. Because if you mess up, it probably costs a pretty penny to like go back and change it and like get the shot that you missed. So, and then being able to edit it all together to make it seamless is always I mean, impressive and to me. Especially the big thing with this movie too, is each color is meaningful. Yeah. For the most part, like, cause I, I was reading like all the, of the bad things that happen in the movie happen in the red room. Do they? Cause I was reading that, like, maybe that that's probably true but like the colors didn't the booby traps didn't depend on color so like that's another thing in the movie is that like there's booby traps in rooms right like some are safe some aren't so they got to figure yeah the room color doesn't it. have to do with traps or not it's more on a, a level of like what's going on with the characters in the room so red there's a lot of conflict there's usually some sort of conflict between the characters. White is something where they're discovering something with like, say the numbers, how she starts figuring out the patterns and that sort of things. Yeah, no, it's, it's and true. Stuff. Like it's, yeah. there's a lot of, yeah, subtlety or symbolism behind a lot of that stuff. So where, where do we want to start with this? So do we want to go with the good about this movie, the bad, do we want to talk about the characters? Where did you guys want to start with this movie? 
let's start at the bottom and work our way up. <laughs> the bottom. What does that even mean? <laughs> the acting is pretty shit. That's okay. That's my biggest. This movie, we'll get to our ratings later. I think it's fairly good. The thing that really brings this movie down for me is the acting and just the characters in general. I love everything about like the cube, the concept of the cube, the clues, the foreshadowing, like all that stuff is great. The acting is, and I wrote down some example or typed some examples, acting is not good except for maybe like one or two people where it's like, okay, and I get it's low budget. You know, you kind of got to deal with what you got. Uh, but th- the girl that played Levin, I <laughs> thought she was, that's some of the worst acting. Um, yeah. Hey, I let's got... throw glasses on her. That makes her look smart. <sighs> yeah, and like the glasses say. are cool. Like the glasses <laughs> made, like, oh, they took all the jewelry off of people, but these glasses were left here. That must mean something. Like, that's cool. But yeah, like, let's throw glasses on her. And I like, too, how at, at the beginning, she's like, I'm nothing. I'm no one. I live with my parents. Oh no! Wait, you're like a fucking mathematical genius. Like, do you yeah. you don't want to bring that up that you're like a savant, like with like with <laughs> with numbers and everything? Um, it, and also was, the one that I love too when they when she breaks like the first code of like prime numbers mean trapped room. She just yells prime numbers like three times in a row. She's like prime numbers, prime numbers, prime. I'm like, oh my god, this is like. And in a movie where there's nothing but people, like it's just the cube rooms, like like the people on screen is literally it. Like acting is kind of a big deal. So that really brought it down for me. How they acting, got acting to stuff. the point where they were figuring out the clues was a bit of a stretch. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I will be back on in five minutes. I gotta get oh boy. to another room. Are you gonna move no, rooms? I have to move rooms. Like okay. in the cube, it'll be a blue room now. Okay. <laughs> oh, sweet. Okay. Well, now that we can actually start the podcast, welcome to the good, bad, and garbage. <laughs> Fuck Quinn. He doesn't need to be here. Episode one, we finally got rid of him. It only took we us long. Fine. We're just gonna, yeah. I'm gonna delete those old ones. This is episode one. We're starting from scratch right here. Let's go. <laughs> Oh, here's another part of the movie, like, because I have it on, like, just while we're recording, I put it on. When she's scratching equations into metal with a button. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. Like, I don't know what else you're supposed to do. Like, do you just give them a pen and paper? But I, I like, really? Like, you're using a button to, like, do math equations? I don't know. It's like, again, like, you know. A, a slight complaint that if that was the only thing wrong with it i wouldn't care but it's like just a little thing to pile on it was uh i feel like there was a handful of like i don't know if they're just scenes or just i don't know actions the way they wanted to explain things that seemed like that's a little bit uh, the, one of the things that i thought about that could explain something and I know that they like each person had a trait that was supposed to like yeah. apply to the situation, even yeah, like help them, to help them escape, like, it's like right. something they do. Yeah, yeah. even the Kazan guy or Kazan Kazan, whatever his name yeah. was. But like the, uh, I was thinking like when they're sitting there changing rooms, and I know it comes back to like they think that they went full circle, you know for a second at the end of the movie he uh did you leave that for me yeah oh thank you maria made me popcorn (laughs) oh shit (laughs) but i was just trying to explain something so i stuck stuff in my mouth (laughs) (laughs) all right let me just write this let me just write this time code down as to where to make an edit both stuff's face with popcorn no so they're they're doing they come full like the full circle thing happens they kind of explain that you would think when you're traveling so you know that you're traveling like say 
if you're just going like three dimensional, like standing one direction, you're like, I'm going left on this one. I'm going up on this one, right on this one, down on this one. You know, like you would think you'd try to map it out in your head. So you would know if you're doing a circle, like that yeah. girl's so smart at math. You think the spatial awareness of someone would be like, holy shit, we just went three to the left, three to the up, three to the right, three to the down. Like, well, we should be in the same room, even though they were in the same room. And then the, yeah, there's the, a reveal the there. happens. Yeah. But like, you would think if you're trying to escape and you're going through all these rooms, you'd be sitting there thinking like, all right, we've gone whatever six rooms to the left three up like just mapping it out in your head so you have an idea not that you have to keep it exact but like if you yeah. have a nerdy dude nerdy chick who just likes looking at numbers and shit that should be like oh i just that's what have been like the first trait that i would have thought it's like let's just think about where we are and maybe which direction we're moving and see yeah. if we land on any clues or something. Well, that's like the one. So Ren who dies early on, but he's like a, pr- a escapee. Like he knows how to escape prisons. That's like his trait or solution. Like, right. Um, he says like, I, I'm just going in a straight line if I can. Right. Like just go mm. in a straight line to try to get to the edge. So I, you know, I think that was the plan. And then, you know, they, they figure out like through math, which like all that stuff I actually like. I, I don't know if it's true. We'll ask the former engineer if like if the math checks out in this movie. Actually, as she was going through that, I was texting you guys when he was doing that. I was like, oh, I know this stuff. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, like they, they were able to pinpoint where they were. So like the whole circle thing, I mean, we can get to that reveal later. I was really worried that that something was going to happen there and I'm glad they had a different reveal, but so yeah, I, I mean, thought, yeah. they started stretching the map a little bit when I, she starts going uh, crazy, <laughs> scribbling out well, the metal. I assume, the I assume it got stretched a little bit. That makes sense. Yeah. The beginning, the beginning of the math, I was like, not that I'm a math whiz, but like, I understand the concept of factors and prime numbers. So I'm like, makes sense, makes sense. And then she's like doing the math in her head and she's like, 27,000 rooms. I'm like, okay, like absolute brainiac. I've heard about like some people that have that ability to just envision math and like that. Sounds like, and then at the it, end, she's doing all the math, going through stuff. And of course, like they rely on Kazan, yeah, or whatever yeah. his name is, who's got yeah. the mental, oh, but yeah, they program. rely on him to, to do the, the power, the prime, but like power there's a point where it just gets mudded down, you know, yeah. where you're like, all right, you're just skipping through, you know, you're like, it's like, there's always those plots of movies. And I feel like it's a common plot for a lot of like rom-coms where you're slowly building up, slowly building up. And I feel like for rom-coms, this is a stretch of an example. The beginning of like a, a lot of those types of movies are the best from like the first beginning to like an hour and 15 minutes in. And then there's like an absolute, like tragedy that happens and the story arc falls and you're disappointed and then in the next 20 minutes it solves itself again and like there's no humor in it there's no like you know yeah. it's not nearly like tiptoes oh, oh, rom- <laughs> yeah, like tip no rom-coms you're right like all rom-coms the last 20 minutes is a drama like because they have to be like right. serious with like and it's not it's never as good as the first good. hour and 15 or whatever you Correct. know take whatever time stamp you want no, correct, hundred percent. All movie, seventy five, seventy five percent through the movie. That's always it. Whatever seventy five percent is, and even though, like, I thought the ending, like you said, like if it ended the way you thought it was going to, with the whole end up in the same room, it would have been yeah. terrible. I thought they at least like found a decent ending to it, and it was better. But it did seem rushed. You know, it's like yeah. they compact like seventy percent of the storyline in the final thirty minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and this movie is only 90 minutes long, so the last third of the movie. movie. But um, next next character is Holloway, who is the the other female other than Levin. The uh, doctor. The doctor. She was she a shrink? Is that right? Was she like a psychiatrist? I, I think it had to have been because um, when the Kazan guy yeah, showed up, she was the comfort was like, one that's to him. Like you go handle it. <laughs> It was just because I think you're right. Like I think it's implied that, but it's never state like stated. 
And it was always weird. Like one of her first lines is like, I can't chit chat. I'm like, isn't that literally the job of a, of a shrink or psychiatrist? But, yeah, she can't sh- but, what, you what, know. Was it shoot the breeze. Yeah, yeah. So which was, by the way, a hilarious line by her by her because she said that like it was casual talk. Meanwhile, like he was talking, he said something that totally could not be mistaken as like his wife died. Like, there's not shooting the breeze. And I know then he's like Oh no no no! She didn't die. We just got a divorce. Like hey, that's Quinn. another lighthearted subject. <laughs> like, yeah, that's not shooting the breeze. Is like <laughs> talking about death or divorce. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, I get. It. But Holloway overall, I I didn't mind her. I thought there were some bad acting moments. To, not to bring it all back, like the acting, but when it's only them on screen, that's kind of what I default to. She had some bad moments, but like overall, not terrible. Like it, it was okay. Like I, I kind of liked her character. She's the only one who like cares about Kazan, who's like, you know, like we can we can talk about him a little bit, but what were you gonna say, Bo? I was gonna say I don't think she's the only one that cares. In the beginning, she does. In the beginning, there is there's yeah. another character by the end that does too, but she's initially the only one who like will take care right. of Kazan. So like quickly talking about Quentin, he's kind of like the de facto leader of this group. He's apparently a cop, which I have some questions about that. But he's he's the one you were talking about where he's got three girls, but s- separated. But he t- he's the one who takes the creeper turn, right? Like, you kind of know, that's, you know, one of my problems with this movie. I felt like all the characters were relatively predictable. Like, watching this movie, I went, Quentin's going to turn bad. Like, I don't know, maybe I'm the only one who thought that. But I was watching this going, like, Quentin's going to turn into a bad guy. Like, it seemed I, aggressive, way too that's, aggressive. That's the thing, super he like, aggressive. He uh, seemed like uh, so Sinbad. Going on that, <laughs> did you know that every character's name is based on a prison? I found today. Really? Like, yeah, did today. That, that's that trivia. I'm glad you guys do research. <laughs> um, yeah, I looked at that today. Kazan is named after the Kazan prison in Russia. Uh, mm-hmm. Levin and Worth are named after the Leavenworth prison in the U.S. Uh, I've heard of that at least. Quentin, Quentin is, is named after, after San Quentin, San Francisco. That's yeah, really Sa- San Quentin State Prison. That makes sense. Heard of that? Uh, Doctor Helen Holloway is named after the Holloway wi- Women's Prison in the U.K. Renz is named after like the the, the Renz prison in France, and then. Alder Alderson must have been that guy that died at the very beginning, because like I don't why is he isolation have a character, character name? But yeah, Alder Alderson oh. Federal Prison in the U.S. So, yeah, they're all named after a prison. I have it right so, here. so there's a little trivia for you, but um, yeah, Quentin is the guy. He he turns evil. He kills a couple people in the end. Like he's he ends up being the bad guy. He's the one slowly creeping into insanity. Um, but I brought up the cop thing. Do we actually think he's a cop? And the only reason I bring it up is because he doesn't really seem like a cop and have a lot of traits of, as a cop. And then Halloway at one point, like, turns to him and starts, like, kind of making fun of him and goes, like, yeah, you're a cop, Quentin. And I'm like, is that her way of calling him out that, like, maybe he isn't one? Like, is he just, like, a bad dude and he's, like, pretending to be a cop just to get out of there? Like, he has more traits of a fucking like serial killer than he does a cop in this movie i would say as a cop usually they are pretty level headed maybe that's a stretch but there's uh, definitely in this day and age uh, maybe a little bit of a stretch not, to get, not to get political not to get to make it political again but, no. <laughs> but, yeah. but like just the way they assess situations because of training and in high stress situations they handle things differently and he he deteriorates quickly quick compared to the rest of the group who is probably not mentally capable of handling high stress situations yeah and he gets a that's little a, not to like get a little too uncomfortable he gets a little rapey too like i'm just yeah that's saying. a weird that was random that kind of came so out of nowhere out of and the nowhere. only the only hint of it was holloway being like oh yeah quitting like the aggressive father hitting on younger girls no wonder your wife left you you know so like there's like a little hint that like he likes and she said girls, something but, about like she mentioned something or she dropped the line like oh did you beat your kids too after she yeah. slapped or he slapped Holloway yeah. and he just they didn't like he didn't really respond to me they had just like some weird 
His reaction like him away. His reaction made it seem like that she hit the nail right on the head, though. So the whole cop thing, like, there's no way to know. But I kind of watched this going. I don't know. He was pretty useless other than being a like a dipshit aggressor, like, you know, kind of sexually abusive guy. So I don't know. Um, then there's Ren. I talked about him. He's barely in it. He's like the prisoner guy who like kind of shows him the boot trick. You throw a boot in a room to see if it's booby trapped. It turns yeah, out it doesn't legend. always work though. <laughs> um, and then he dies pretty Not early. Yeah. Great no, special fair. effects, by the way. So I think I'm going to say about him, and I know I saw this movie before, but I was really hung over when I watched it the first time, so I, it was like, but you know, I actually didn't remember the ending. Even when it was getting closer, okay. I was like, I don't remember how this ends. But uh, he, uh, when he first popped up on screen, I remembered him, but I thought he was like going to be the, like the heel of the movie. Like, you know, the guy that's constantly like, like fuck this person like we need to ditch them get rid of them like i forgot oh, that he died that was quentin <laughs> yeah no it turns out to be quentin but i like when ren showed up i was like i remember this dude this dude yeah. is the punk that's like you have to try and manage his like psychopathic tendencies and uh <laughs> no. no i was wrong so and then and then he died which like, yeah, his, then he died. Death, his death was i think pretty predict like his longest speech in the movie, he's like sitting in the doorway to another cube. And I'm like, he's about to die. <laughs> this motherfucker is about to yeah. die. And bam, ass into the face. Uh, so not much there about him. And then uh, we, we can talk about Kazan now. I said last, we'll talk about worth last. Kazan is my uh, my cringiest character in this movie. He's maybe the one I dislike the most. Kazan? Yeah, because... I think it's a very, very insulting character. It's someone it doing a Rain Man impression and a very stereotypical Rain Man. <laughs> like this, I, I'm sure they just said, go watch the movie Rain Man and just do that. Include like he does it all down to like he hits himself in the head, like when Rain, like he doesn't want to get on the plane and he's freaking yeah. out and he's hitting himself. He like the first time you see him, he like goes up to the wall and he starts like bumping his head on the wall. It's just I think it's just a very insulting, stereotypical look at it, like an autistic person. And it's just like an impression of Dustin Hoffman doing Rain Man, down to oh. the fact of being good at math. Like, and yeah, that's a that's a thing that was like I know that. The fact that he like supplied something that benefited the group at the ending and it's well i'm sure the whole <clears throat> idea behind them was like don't judge a book by its cover this like person who like can't even speak suddenly is worthwhile he's like yeah like the most like, important like, person yeah like, yeah you can like determine factors in his mind from large numbers like at a snap of his fingers like whatever but it was over the top like I don't watch the show, but I know Maria watches it, like the Good Doctor, or whatever, where the guy's super autistic yeah, or something. And I've heard, but of that at least show. like he like commute. And I don't know about the show, so this could even that show could be terrible too, for all I know. But like they don't make him completely inept, other than yeah. the fact that he can decipher numbers really, really well. Prime factorizations. <laughs> yeah, and that's. The thing, like this character, is com he's completely helpless, peeing on himself and things. Like, I just, and it's, you know, this is May 97. I don't think it's the right thing to do to look at it as like a scope of the time it was made. I don't think that's always like the right thing to do because then you're kind of being okay with blackface that was done and, you know, the back in the day and stuff. But I just, when, when that character first, first showed up, I was hoping that it was someone faking like it was some genius level criminal faking this autistic shtick. And then he would, he would be revealed to be like kind of the bad guy in the end. But then we just got part way, like getting through and Quentin going crazy. And then the, the moment that uh, 11 goes, she can't do prime uh, the power of the prime numbers or whatever, like that large, I just went, oh. It's going to be the Rain Man thing, and Kazan's going to be able to do it, and that's exactly what so, happened. So I just, I just well, hated that. There's a theory that. behind Kazan uh, as he had already escaped the cube, 
Oh, really? I did not see this. Okay. Okay, so there's a theory that he had escaped the cube, but the powers that be that control the cube don't let anybody escape, so they lobotomized him and threw him back in. So, okay, the lobotomy thing is a theory I've heard because this is the Spawn sequels. There's three movies uh, in total. I, I just saw that earlier and before we started the, this. Thing. The third movie, I didn't watch. I watched part of the second one, which we can talk about if you want. That movie. That movie uh, no. That movie. They don't look great. Um, it's, it's not. I didn't finish it. And it's just as long as this, or just as short, I should say. The third movie is the one where they, they reveal that no one can really escape and they just lobotomize them and put them back in. So that's like a reveal apparently oh, in the third real, movie. They really do that. Oh, okay. Yeah. But like, if you just look at this movie alone, you can maybe hope that like he actually gets out in the end. But anyway, so I don't know. That's just me being like looking into things too much. I just, I hated the Kazan character because I thought it was just the worst kind of trope and stereotype character being like this autistic guy who's completely helpless but like is revealed to be able to be good at math which i feel like is a trope that was in movies since rain man is like autistic kids are really good at math which like i'm sure that's probably true in some cases but like Thumb. it's it's just all the time it's the thing in movies you know so i don't know yeah i mean it's a stretch this is, I mean, they obviously, you know, had to do what they had to do with the budget they had. Um, it's more of don't look at it from a, from an acting standpoint. More look at it from a theoretical standpoint of what it means and what the thought yeah. behind the whole movie is, rather yeah. than the individual performances. I think they could have like budget, yeah, like they're completely tied into a certain budget, whatever. Um, I think you can, I think you can make these characters more interesting though. <laughs> like, I think like my problem, the, yeah, like my problem with the movie is the characters and their characterizations and the writing. And like, that's all something like they can just change. Like if the, if they would have done something where, cause at one point they talk about how, you know, why were we chosen to be put in this cube? And if it's something where like, they're all connected to the same crime or something and like someone's putting these people in that are like responsible for something and throughout the movie they realize that they're connected through like mm -hmm. that that way or whatever like that maybe that could be a more interesting all like all these characters are just stereotypical or predictable and just not great except for like the character i like the most is the one we haven't talked about yet and that's worth um he's, he's the best he has yeah. the best like monologue of the whole thing when he talks about of the oh uh, what is it um how the, no one's controlling this yeah like i think he's got one i think that person does the best acting out of all of them yeah that's uh, not a stretch <laughs> yeah very true you're very true uh very right but like i think his character has actual interesting characterization behind him like it's revealed he's he designed part of the cube and like that's how he knows some things about it and like i don't know like i just think he's actually interesting and and a, a fairly good person actually he, be, at the beginning he's kind of like oh is he this jerk person but he's actually like a good guy mm -hmm. um so yeah i don't know i i liked work the most and he does eventually become a good person. Like, I think Bo, you know, when he joins the end, like, uh, he mentioned that there is someone who ends up caring about Kazan because the beginning of the movie, they're all jerks to the, like, you know, take away that I don't like the stereotypical, like, mentally handicapped person that they did in this movie. But they have a mentally handicapped per character in this movie and they all treat him like shit, except for Halloway and then later on Worth. So mm -hmm. I actually think, like, and they go back to save him. When yeah. they were right, right there to escape. Yeah, which, yeah, which is like a nice characterization that comes around. But like, he, like you brought up earlier, there's another character other than Holloway that cares about Kazan and its worth at the end of the movie after Quentin kills or lets Holloway die, uh, which was kind of a weird, weird move. But 
Like, I don't know why he did that necessarily. Like, why Quentin, like, let her die. Like, he dove to save her and then, like, let her go. And I'm like, you could just not dove that to was, save her. And Yeah, that was a weird death. That was one of those things where, like we were talking about earlier with him, whether he's, like, a cop or just a total psychopath. Yeah. Or make it political again. <laughs> <laughs> not to get political. Yeah. <laughs> but... The fact that he, uh, like, he did that. Now I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> like, after I said that, <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> All right. Well, if you remember, well, just we're talking about him dropping. Oh, no. It was the whole theory. Like, he, so he, then he started killing people off. And it's like, even though he was of zero value of help at all, he didn't do anything. Yeah. No, other than the beginning, he was like supposed to be the calming figure. Yeah. And, like, like the hurrah guy figure out what are you good at like if someone were to trap you in a room and tell you to get out of it what trait do you have that would help benefit like he he's the one that discovers that worth isn't or he's hiding the fact that he potentially designed this the exterior of the cube Mm -hmm. and he's the one who caught the like glasses thing too so there's a couple like intuitive cop things there in what what world would you be like this person actually has value to this entire situation i know i don't i'm just here to be like the manager you're basically the manager of like a division in a business (laughs) and you're just like i'm just gonna kill my sales team like, I'm just going to kill, like, the accounts receivable team. Like, and I'll figure it out on my own. Like, that's what he was doing. He was just m- voluntarily murdering the people that were actually useful to his escape, which made no sense at all. I don't know if you covered that since I was gone. No. But, like, no. it, him, it just started with him dropping Holloway. And it's like, okay, you killed the one girl that's good at taming the dude that you wanted to kill off in the first place and Kazan. Yeah. yeah. Which, like, they all, like, I hated that. They all treated Kazan like shit. Like, other than... Is, yeah. is there not any sympathy here? The thing that... This isn't the thing that bugged you the most, but I wrote it down to bring it up, is when Levin okay. is... Cause, when Levin, because she treats Kazan like shit. When she's, like, figuring out how many cubes Parking there are... Off the room. Yeah, when she's walking off, the stepping yep. off the room, like, oh, how big is this room? She, like, walks. She's, like, walking it off. She gets to Gazan. She's, like, move. And I'm, like, this, you could walk anywhere in this cube. It's a 14 by 14 foot room, she said. Like, you could <laughs> walk off. And he's sitting, yeah, sitting on the ground. He's sitting on the ground. It's not like he walked in her way. Well, it's, like, she was, she's trying to step it off with her feet. But it's, like, one, he was sitting there first. Two, this is a cube. All the sides are the same. You can walk literally anywhere else. He doesn't need to be in your way. Right. And like I that I wrote that down as like something that really, really I'm like really God, she was just, just being a total it is just oh but but yeah, so I, I wrote that down too, man. Like that caught my eye. I was like, Are you joking? You had she said there are 14 feet square, there are cubes. So she had 14 lanes, essentially one foot lanes to walk in, and she purposely picked <laughs> yeah. the one lane where the do one dude who yeah. she like isn't aware of what's going on, I guess, by the stereotyping of the movie to walk in his lane of path. Like it, it was ridiculous. Yeah, I thought that was I'm like, whatever. Anyways, so it's those are the characters i mean getting through the mo- like the twists of the movie which again like the things with the the cube i really liked so after ho- they get to the edge you know and holloway dies because they're not at the bottom uh they go through like all these different processes of or or levin realizes that the what it, what is it that um math guy you should you you should probably remember this like she figures out that the numbers are like how you figure out how uh, moving Cartesian coordinates. Oh, all right. Um, is that like when something's moving, you can pinpoint it? Yeah. So basically X, Y, Z coordinates. So each of those numbers, there's three sets of numbers. When you add them up, that's their position inside the inner cube. Okay. So yeah, they realize that, which I think is like, like as long as the math like kind of checks out in theory, like I think those are cool uh like reveals and things like that 
Um, my only question is, were they just getting lucky with the prime number thing? Because it turns out prime numbers don't distinguish they a were trap getting or lucky not. With the prime number thing. Because like that was working for the longest time, and I'm like, that's it turns what out that wasn't always true. surprised me. But they did go through a lot of boots because they only they have did. one pair at the end. And remember, it got thrown out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Over the the void. Yeah. Ridiculous. Especially <laughs> when he decides to beat the shit out of the. I thought he killed him. I was like, are we going to see death by boot? <laughs> Turns out not. But hit you in the face, you just go, oh, wait. <laughs> they were malnourished, okay, and very it's true. Dehydrated. Very true. A great line, though. Of, <laughs> I don't. I think it was Levin or said something, or maybe it was Holloway. I don't know what part it was or who said it. And he walks up to her face, and she's like, <laughs> and he goes. You don't want the boot. <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> He's a beat the shit out of words with the boot. Oh my god, that's like uh, comedic timing that was unintentional. Yeah. Well, another funny part because you're right. Like there is like a couple funny parts that I wasn't expecting, and then I assume they're intended to be funny. But when they realize that Kazan can do the the power uh i'm saying that wrong what is it the the power to the prime numbers factors fact yeah like when kazan can do those and they're like oh this room is safe they're like only one way to find out and quentin picks up worth and just throws them into the room like uncle phil style with jazzy jeff like just only one way to find out and then worth lands in the room and he just goes safe I'm just like that was funny. Like it was meant to be like a, funny, but it was. Um, but uh, but yeah, like uh, the reveal that you were talking about earlier, or the first like kind of twist is they they go to a room and Ren's body is there, and they say that was a big one. Yeah, and they're like, did we just go in circles? Uh, and this is something I really liked is. Um, like worth figures out like wait he died in that room and that's not a room anymore and this is like the reveal of the the cubes are moving and that's what the noise that they've been hearing is they've been physically moving um Mm -hmm. which again is something that i that i that i liked and they're able to like pinpoint their location the thing that i didn't like is they get to like they have to find the bridge right like the room that when it moves into its original location is the bridge to like to leave they get to the room that is the bridge and Levin steps on a piece of glass and it's like from her glasses and she goes, oh, this is the room we started in. I was right. We should have never left. I hate that. Like, I yeah. hate that. I hate that it was like the room they started in. That Why? just makes this whole thing feel pointless. I think that's the point. I, I don't know. Like, I think it's more interesting for it to be like something to go find, but it like if you just kind of sit back and just be like, oh, if they just wouldn't have moved, they would have been fine. Like, I don't know. It makes the only thing I just don't like it. That's that fair like, though. Some people do. I mean, there is a line sequence between Quentin and Worth when he kind of goes on his whole meta thing about uh it's a headless entity. Uh about you know, where Quentin's questioning why if no one runs it, why would you put people in it? And then, uh, what did we say? Something about, uh, well, it's here. You have to use it. We built it. You do one part somewhere, somewhere in the world. And you find out later that it's used in a death machine or something, which is like, you know, that to begin with, that's like a legit thing too. That's like, yeah, like people do that. And that's like a smart way to build like shit. They don't want people to find out, you know, like contract Mm -hmm. all the little pieces out. Um, but yeah, I don't. Some people like twists like that. I I didn't necessarily like it, but yeah, I personally what gets me about this movie is the the whole the big picture of it, the meta type stuff of like what is the cube, what is its point, why throw people in there, what happens at the end, the theor- the theoretical stuff, like the the in your face, what the characters do and mean and stuff is just. Kind of pointless but it's more about like what the cube represents um what is it used for what is it why is it there why throw people in it why throw these people in it 
You saying you like that in this movie? Or Bo, go on. Bo, Bo, go go for it. I'm going to come back to Quinn's point in a second because I do think that's actually interesting to talk about. But the only thing that I I wanted to mention about your point, Matt, is that I kind of agree with you in the fact that, like, they ended up in the same room. And, like, like they said earlier, and I mentioned – well, I mentioned earlier, but they said in the movie, like, what was it, 27,000-something rooms. Yeah. Calculated. And like, oh, I have that. I have the math here. Twenty six by twenty six, whatever that it's is. It's crazy. Oh, uh, there's a whole section on how the math works. Yeah, it was twenty six rooms by twenty six sure. rooms by twenty six rooms. Here we go. Yeah. Um, seven seventeen five hundred and seventy six yeah. cubicle rooms. Okay. Yep. Yep. Minus I, an unknown amount for a lot of movies. Regardless. The fact that it, I think we've mentioned this in other movies. I think some of the earlier ones, when we talked about, like, especially Jackie Chan movies, like the trope that you hate is when someone is doomed, where like someone is on the ground, they just got their face pummeled, and the other villain is standing over them and, like, oh, I'm gonna, like, giving them their, like, coup de grace <laughs> yeah. to their life. And then oh, randomly, you mean like, what they just made happen. fun of in like Austin Powers, and they just talk and talk, <laughs> talk, and then they escape. They, they yeah. just get saved because of like the one dude is just not like killing the person, and that's just, what it, like. Give me the like, exposition. So Come on, where it's like you have a one in seventeen thousand five hundred chance essentially to let. I guess if you're in the same area, you could probably cut it down. But still, the fact to land in the same room is by pure luck. You oh know. sure like that orange one like when they're going yeah right. to, no, like, yeah. Up in the same exact room and to be able to that's how they figured out that something was different that they were off on understanding how the rooms were it's pure luck yeah of course no, it I, be a movie without that but you do have to consider yeah. the fact like what are yeah. the chances that you end up in that same room and i did have some similar written down where I was kind of like, do I talk about this? Because at the end of the day, it's a movie. Like, what do we, whatever. But when they, and when Quentin's going crazy, thousand dollar movie. <laughs> yeah, I know. But like when Quentin's going crazy and they ditch him, like they, they actually like they put his head in, in the door and they, they actually do get away. Like and like the the cubes move around. You know, How does he no, get back up? That's that's my thing. That's the thing I that had to bring up. That was my thing too. Is like, oh, they're going back to save Kazan, which is awesome. Yeah. But then all of a sudden he just shows up on our more. He's not that smart. I'm saying there's no way Quinn could figure out how to get back to him. But again, like it's kind of like Bo, what you're saying. Like there's no way they would end up in that room. But like it's a movie, so what are you gonna do? But at the same time, we're picking this movie apart. Like so, so I, I shouldn't say picking apart because there's a lot I like about this movie. I feel like I'm talking more negative than positive with this movie. Like I, there's, there, I do think it's like a pr- fairly good movie. I was going to say, I feel like this is the first movie we've done, though, where there's, like, it was pure story plot. I feel like everything we've done has had an ounce of humor to it, you know? There's sure. not really humor in this movie. Oh, the thing. not we're much. We're, actually, <laughs> we're picking apart this movie because it's, like, the one that was trying to be, like, a true, like, pure, like, yeah, like movie. It wasn't banking on the fact that the, it's... The plot's the only thing after. there. You know, it's not an yeah, action right. movie with like flashing lights to distract you. Like it's literally Other six than, people in a in a cube. Yeah, best comparison could be like maybe Troll Hunter. You know? Sure. But even, I guess. Also, it's, but there's some uh, nice like flashy paint, paint on Troll Hunter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, it's not great paint. You bought it at Home Depot, but it's still there. Yeah, Bobby just might have to paint it five years earlier than you would if you got it premium paint. <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah, like so Quentin somehow catches up to him after they they ditch him. They figure out how to get to the bridge. They get to the bridge. Uh, Quentin shows up, kills Worth or Levin. Which one does he stab? He stabs one of them, like with the, one of the. Which one? Levin, he like sticks a sword through and like picks her oh, up. Wow. It's like, crazy you would stab her. Considering he wanted to stab her with something else earlier in the movie, but you know, um, maybe it's metaphorical. Yeah, I guess so. But so he kills her. Uh, Worth <laughs> kills Quentin in a crazy, crazy way. Like that was kind of cool. Like you put him through the doorway, and when the cube moves, you just let the cube chop him in half. <laughs> like, and then was... the blood slide. <laughs> yeah, that was cool. Yeah, actually, that was cool. Like. 
You could tell the writer for this movie, the director had a fever dream of that happening to them, and they're like, I need to make a whole movie about sliding boxes and someone getting cut in half. <laughs> I do I do have <laughs> well, a, like that one scene, it slip. <laughs> yeah, I do have like where the, the idea of this movie came from. I did like figure out that or I know where that is, but but yeah, so Quentin dies. Uh, and then Worth kind of like chooses to stay and die in the cube and like gets Kazan to like leave and escape. And I do like, and I'm kind of ignoring the sequels <laughs> right now, but I do like that one, someone escapes and two, that it's Kazan. As much as I like hate the stereotypical stereotypes of that character, I'm glad that it's like the innocent one, the helpless innocent one who like gets to escape. And I'm glad mm-hmm. someone got to, uh, you know, I, I like it sometimes when it's like, no, oh, there's no hope everyone dies in a movie. But this is one where I'm like, someone's got to escape. Come on. Like, I don't just don't want it to end and like everyone dies. <laughs> Please. I feel like it would. I, I think the thing that makes it like you want someone to escape is the fact that you don't have a solution otherwise, you know, like if it was a different movie where, where you knew who the like, the like the anti-hero was then it would be okay if someone died because you knew who to pinpoint it was and like of course the cube is like the issue but you still don't understand the storyline you know yeah. but i think that's what quinn was I, was that what you're talking about before quinn with the plot with the headless like the worth worth monologue well, that's that's like one of the big like turning points of the whole thing is when worth kind of like finally comes out of his shell right and- yeah. They're quiet. Well, like, a, that's an unanswered thing. Like who who made this cube? Who made the cube? Because he kind of has an insight to it. And he's like, I was just a guy in an office. I was given yeah. some things. I did my job. That I don't know anything more. Yeah, and it would suck if the whole movie was like you watched it and you still didn't. If someone, if the whole cast is going to die, you want to know why they're going to die. You know, yeah. at least have like an you could attribute it to something but if they all die and you're just like to go back to the original statement of the twist that you were worried about matt where they end up in the same room if that was the end of the movie like end up in the same room and then it fades into the oh i would have hated that spiral away like there's music and i was in the movie be like what the that was the dumbest thing i ever watched in my life i I don't even understand why yeah no, I would, I would have, I would have hated that. Like an amb- super ambiguous ending like that. Like no, 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 no. Um, but yeah, so Kazan's the one that gets to- away. Based on sequels, maybe not. <laughs> maybe he doesn't escape. But just based on this movie alone, you can kind of maybe like he does escape. Um, so yeah, and that's ba- that's basically the end of the movie. It's like a wall of like white light is that he escapes into. Um, I'll play my own character arc for him and just say he escaped. Then he like had a bunch of toxic gases in him that were making him act that way. And he's actually just okay. And he's in the free world. He's happily married with a few kids. Oh, wow. What, what a twist. Actually the best, that should have been the sequel is he like comes out in the world and then he meets Quentin's ex-wife and gets married to her and then takes care of his kids. And like, is it a good dad towards the kids? That That might've been, that should might, be a part of our podcast is that we pick how we should think the sequel should go after the story plot. Well, I'll tell you that that might be, have been a better sequel than what actually happened because the second movie, which I watched the first half of, is called Hypercube. I saw that it happened in 2002. Yeah, and it's it's bad. Um, yeah, no, it's... Uh, <laughs> so they decide to go, like, it's a test rack. So it's like four dimensional. So time is different in each room. It isn't booby trapped. It's just time is different. It's very boring. That's and a stretch. Very it's bad. Sound. The first one is like ridiculous. Like Quinn, you mentioned like maybe they get a little wonky with the math. At least it's like fairly grounded and like it's just based on existing math. I mean, it's it's not bad. I mean, the math is pretty good. I mean, yeah. they have to dramatize it. Sure. Bit. But the second, the second one takes the leap in, like, time altering. Yeah, once like, you do time, because that's, that's not really a thing that people yeah, have. Like, you, you lose me there. So That's what I kind of meant, though, though. 
because like when I took, cause I had to take a couple semesters of physics just to major in biology in college that like when they started talking about time or anything like that, it was getting to the part of like theoretical section where somebody I can imagine who thought they're smart and the rest of the class would take it yeah. literally and try and like make something out of it. Yeah. Well, that's, and whoever did the set. So the, the director of the first movie chose to not do the second one and third one. Cause he's like, I don't like sequels. <laughs> so like, he just, he, Good man. I would say like, Good okay, I, I, I respect, guy. I respect this guy. So he wasn't involved in two and three. So like, and he co-wrote number one. So like, Number one is kind of like his baby, I think, to an extent. And what is good in retrospect to the other two. So I'm glad he, he was like, no, I, 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 don't, I don't need to do sequels. So that was kind of nice, at least. He did direct uh, Tremors TV movie. I was looking at his credit. So the guy that did the first movie, he's done a bunch of TV stuff. Um, like Westworld, he did a couple episodes and couple other things he did uh to bring it back to a previous episode he did a tremors tv movie in 2018 damn so kind of of random but um but yeah so the second movie is bad and the third one takes place outside of the cube it's like people monitoring people in the cube i didn't watch that one at all but i just i hear it's also bad so i credit for you even trying to second one i saw it was called hypercube and i was like yeah. no, just the title know. alone just makes you go like no that thing is dog shit i'm not watching that thing um <laughs> no it's so straight to dvd or <laughs> yeah it probably was but yeah it was it was on two it was on the same streaming it was on tubi that i'm like all right i'll put oh. it on during work and i'm just like what the fuck is this <laughs> like I, uh, I don't know so ov- overall i think cube was i'll call it good like overall i would call it a good movie um just like the acting and characters bring it down from being like solidly a good movie for me like if i'm giving it out of 10 like i know you guys don't need to do that but out of 10 i gave it a 6.4 so it's like in that good range and for like our labeling i'll, I'll say it's good i'd say it's good i like the theory behind it i like the ideas of it uh the actual realization of it isn't great but there are some good twists and i think they did a great job with the, the money the budget they had it's pretty impressive i'm always amazed what you can do with it's why when you see movies like and i hate to hurt you with this man but <laughs> marvel movies and you have such inflated budgets and you still produce dog shit and then you have movies like this that's like I mean, you could scrape this together on GoFundMe and make a movie that's not bad. It's not great, but it's not bad. It's thought provoking and it it makes you think about stuff differently mm-hmm. for really not much. No, yeah, I, I appreciate the low budget and creativity behind this movie a lot for sure. So, I think when you have a movie that's low budget it really makes you think how you can uh, how you can make that money stretch you don't you don't just rely on that ah, throw more money at it and you produce crap no it's cool like yeah they had one cube so you just film yeah. all one color pretty, and move on pretty like incredible this. how they did it like yeah. filming it and they shot it in what they say 20 days 20 days? i want to say 20 yeah that's pretty that's pretty crazy sounds like a magical experience for an actor get paid <laughs> oh dude that sounds brutal yeah. i mean i guess the only thing i could think of and i guess it's made 90 they still had to have this ability in 97 is why couldn't you just i mean you can do with any like these days or you just have a switch where you're like we don't have to film all the red rooms right now we'll just press a button it's red now film the scene all right we're going to a green room press a br- button it changes Dude, the- it was 1997 but still in 97 we have that stuff at Not like the 40s of a phone yeah like it's, it's that's like basic technology have you it's- been to a rave in the 19 19- the 90s quinn no i was way too young well youtube it it's possible 
Yeah, I know the the co- they use some kind of gel coloring for the like I, I get what you're saying. I don't know if it was like the type of lighting they needed and they they just had to be as efficient with it as possible. I don't know. But yeah, it's the nineties, it's not the forties. So you think maybe there's something they could have done there. But um but are you saying you picked this movie, are you saying good, I assume bad? Which one? Yeah. What I assume almost mono wanted me to say bad, but I did kind of like it. That's why I wanted to volunteer, which I don't want to volunteer the next movie I pick, which I don't know. I thought it was it just I sent you guys the trailer originally because the trailer is so outrageous. And I remember just thinking the concept was so stupid. I mean, you just if you had to explain to somebody it's a bunch of people stuck in a series of boxes trying to escape, like that's horribly that's boring. preposterous. Yeah, yeah. I did actually think it was. I remember being like I said, I watched it hungover, so I don't remember all of it. But I remember being like, "That was pretty good." Like, yeah, I was like embedded in my mind. Yeah. But so it was. I, I mean, I'm, I'm I don't think it was outstanding. I don't think it's like the best movie. I wouldn't probably even rank it in like the top five movies we've watched that I can think of off well, the top of my. Well, let's see. I mean, I got if you're able to like think of it on your mind. So, me giving it a six point four puts it between uh let's see i've got the rankings up puts it between small soldiers and rumble in the bronx for me and number it's number nine out of the ones that we've done i mean it's okay yeah i mean it's definitely not top five your bow here's yours oh gods of egypt dude <laughs> i didn't hate god yeah. oh, here's the only, here's Man, the I'm only not thing four five and six what? Here's the only thing. four, five, six. You're not seeing these. Like Wait a person? second. Maybe let me try uh, full screen. I see him, Matt. Oh, here we go. I no, I got it now. What was that? You're a troll hunter guy. I love troll hunter. Like yeah, that. This is I number two. Know. I voluntarily <laughs> like picked that one. Look on mine, please. Yeah, but, but do you know where? I would probably put it between Tremors and Gods of Egypt. That's what I would think. Oh, okay. Like right, right. So your new number eight. That's what I would think. Okay. Quinn. There you go. You got Velocipaster number two. I always forget I how have high you, you have. I haven't had that hard in a while. <laughs> that is so hilarious. Tiptoes just strikes a chord because it was so it was crazy. So, that actually, though, that I feel like I was going to mention this because I don't know if we're ever going to talk about it, but like Tiptoes is the epitome of a movie. That was a most fun podcast. That, like, <laughs> it's our longest one, except for except for a live watch. Posturous movie. It was. That's like <laughs> the best thing. It was the true. So bad. It's actually kind of <laughs> amazing to watch an experience for one time. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> but tiptoes could have been a top five for me if it was ranking <laughs> on how we do this because no, I. What was I watching it with a look of horror on my face the entire time? <laughs> Bo has it higher than you. Bo has it at five. And I, honestly, if I was if you told me six. I had to tell Bo people to watch a stupid movie, I would put Tiptoes over Jingle All the Way. I like Jingle All the Way more as a movie, but Tiptoes is like you kind of have to watch it. Like yeah. if you've never seen Jingle it's All the Way or so you've never crazy. seen Tiptoes, I would be like. You kind of got to watch Tim. <laughs> I would say Cube for me is probably between Jingle All the Way and Small Soldiers or above Jingle All the Way. It can't okay. be Tiptoes. In my brain, like, I'd Jingle All the Way at four. <laughs> like, is that nine? <laughs> That's nostalgia. That's for sure. It is. Like, it just straight up is. Nostalgia hits hard, man. Why do you think you know, people keep doing sequels yeah. and treacles and forkles? Yeah, I know. Well, and, like I whatever Fast and Furious is that like whatever. Thirty-seven. Uh, I stopped when Vin died. You're what? Wait, what did you say, Matt? Would you? Or, I didn't. Quinn. Yeah, Quinn. I said I stopped say? watching Fast and Furious when Vin Diesel died. When he died. Paul Walker died. Oh, wait, no, Paul Walker's dead. Is this a joke, Quinn? I, is, this is some terrible joke that I have no idea what yeah, the punchline is. Bad joke. <laughs> it's just, it's more me saying they need to stop making those movies. 
So I don't back to the the movie we're actually talking about. Are there is there anything else you, notes? I can't. Bo, not talking to you about notes. Uh, any else you guys had to talk about? Notepad, by the way. Okay, I thought you said you did. You just pulled that out because you saw it laying on the counter and it has a grocery list on it. It is a grocery list on the other side. <laughs> oh, I knew it. Nailed it. Got him. <laughs> um, I, I, go. I got a couple uh, moments. Um, wait, what did I write here in this? Can't oh yeah, no, on no, actually, right. I just the thing I, where we mentioned where he decides to walk where the guy the Kazan is sitting. Um, but the one of the other things that was cracking me up that cracked me up is when they asked uh, Worth if he has a wife. He's like, no, I have plenty of porn. Oh, yeah, but he's got a- oh no, <laughs> I actually I'm- have Holly gives him yes, 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 yes. I had that doubt as a bad acting <laughs> moment for her. I, was, I literally wrote down Holloway after the pornography 18 minutes in goes nice nice and does a jerk off gesture <laughs> she did it so violently <laughs> her face too like her face is like <laughs> I'm like what the fuck is going on right now I did I had that one written down too that was good that killed me yeah uh, I think that was it and all the other things that I wrote down the boot killing the boot um the only other thing, I don't even actually want to talk about this unless you guys want to, but the only other thing that I was going to talk about is if you really had to think about it and you put yourself in a life or death situation, you had, I said life or death, life or death situation, and you discover somebody that you have to take care of that's mentally handicapped, what would you honestly do? Like, if you have your existing family outside of this situation, like, Really, if you seriously had a non movie situation, we? is this like right away or is this like a day in? Because a day in and a right away might be a different mindset. I'm saying if you when say they you're, you're put in the cube, like when they when it happens to them, there's no theatrics about it. You are literally you have to figure out what you're going to do in that situation. Uh, a bad example because. It's one of those situations where, like, he makes a noise and it sets off the detectors that one time. You know, like, if you were out in the woods, it might be different. Like, making noise doesn't necessarily get you killed. In fact, it might save your life. Yeah, I know. I know it's somewhere that you probably don't know until you're in the situation. I'd like to think I would like still help, like mainly just because of my like my background, like with like my mom is a special ed teacher and like. You know, I, I've talked to kids like that like almost my whole life. So like I, I'd like to think I would, but you're right. Like if you're in that situation, like maybe you, you don't know. It's the thing that really got me thinking about it, and I don't even know what the true answer is or the right answer is. I think you would want to put a concerted effort into trying to figure out before you had to like give an ultimatum. But like the added fact that if you had an existing family outside of that yeah. You know, like if you're thinking about your current situation, it is totally different than if it's just saving yourself. Yeah. You know? And I don't. I, it's like, that's way too serious for this podcast, but I did write it down. <laughs> I was like, that is well, one of those things where. It's tough too. I know in the movie they get past it, but when you come across that room where noise activates the, the trap, right. like that's tough. It's tough to that get past it. That wasn't doesn't want to go in the room scene. that has red. Yeah, that's where. Yeah, no, I don't know. You know, I don't, like that's, you just you gotta know how to talk to like that person and just be, you know it's a red room. Cover your eyes, like you sit here, like you just gotta know how to talk to them. But that's tough. That's a tough one. Quinn, do you have anything else? Notes, trivia. I've made my points. Oh, the last trivia I had, I said the. Uh, the inspiration of this movie came from an episode of The Twilight Zone. Um, I just hoped it's factor. <laughs> yeah, came from an episode called Five Characters in Search of an Exit. Fitting. I guess it's about like five, five strangers are in like a giant cylinder and they have to try to escape. So 
Uh, and they do, but it turns out they're actually just dolls in someone's uh, playhouse. So, twist. Oh, for, Twilight Zone. Spoiler alert for that the Twilight original Zone episode. Fuck. Yep. So, that's all I had for this. Um, all right, it's um, way past my bedtime, and I got yeah. like a 14 hour drive tomorrow night. So. Yeah, no, it sounds good. I think I have the next pick, and the Masters are coming up, so I think I'm going to go at the Legend of Bigger Vans. Oh, good one. I kind of like it. The idea. I've never seen it, so I kind of like the idea. I have good memories of that movie, but I think it's a bad movie. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've seen it. I haven't seen it since college. I think I, I, think I just... Movie. I feel like I need to get in the spirit. Yeah, I think... I think it's just like because it's a golf movie. I think I just liked it as a kid, but I think objectively in retrospect, like I don't think it's that good. But we'll see. Like that's why I want to do it and I want to watch it because I don't know. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Until so, a month from now when we do this again. <laughs> yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. All, All right, right, guys. Have a good night. See you, you too. <laughs> She, yeah, I slept so in her much. room last night for like three hours because she was screaming for like two. You guys are doing she's still. Fun. She's still the only girl in the group too. I feel like uh, whatever works. We found is out what you um, have from our other friend today, uh, April's best friend. Um, yeah. She's had, having her second kid. Another boy. She, she, like another boy. <laughs> that's like fourteen boys of our really close friends to one girl. Yeah. That's hilarious. Uh, she, Having a boy too. Jesus. I want two boys. You want two boys? Yeah. Because I just want to use all the same shit and everything is just chill as fuck. That's all I want. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't want to spend more money. All I do is spend money on Lennox. It's terrible. Nah, yeah, you that's just, called being a just, parent, Maria. Just put the. <laughs> Put the girl in like the boys onesies. Or I just like know. I know. I just buy so many clothes. It's like a problem. Like it's an actual issue. So. Yeah, but he looks super cute. <laughs> mm, yeah, right. <laughs> it's the little oh, cockroach outfit is killer. Then he's gonna be gross and smell and be like you guys and that weird ball. Everything. Everything's gonna, <laughs> oh, everything's gonna, gonna be sticky. About someone in this group. <laughs> Everything's gonna get sticky yeah, right? and smelly. <laughs> I feel like they're just are, gonna be stinky. Bathroom doors are gonna get locked. You're like, what's going on in there? <laughs> showers okay, are gonna be like showers are gonna be like 45 minutes long. And you'd be like, what's, Don't what's, worry, mom, I'm doing my own laundry. 45 now. minutes. <laughs> I hate this whole don't touch my socks. <laughs> no, those are clean. I'll clean them. Don't worry. Just don't I'll touch clean them. them. They're clean. I got it. Don't worry. They don't bend for a reason. <laughs> Why is there always one sock missing? Yeah. Why is one sock always like you can crack it and the other one's fine? <laughs> there's one in your hamper and then there's always one that's automatically in the washing machine. <laughs> I should mention we don't like totally leave him absent. Like we have this monitor on us with sound playing all the time. So if he does start rolling over and like screaming, we're very aware. (laughs) Well, I would hope you have a monitor. It records awesome video. So obviously like any, anytime it sees movement and starts recording to save for data. So Maria was looking back one morning at what she was doing last night. And because it's like dark in the room, obviously we're not trying to shine lights. She's trying to grab the pacifier and put it in his mouth. And she doesn't realize that his head is like on his cheek. Oh, and like Maria's trying to, stick to put it in it his in ear. I do that all the time. <laughs> He's going to have an ear. Holder. No, I do that all the time. I, I started I had to like feel his chest and like, where's his chin? Okay, there's his chin. Oh, okay, there it goes. <laughs> like, it's, it's a process. I've had, I've poked him in the eye before. I've been like, where? Oh, nope, that's the eye. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Squishy, bad. 